if we've made it this far, we've actually made something pretty complex. We've spent uh, about three weeks or so setting this up, a login, logout system. I'm confirming that, it's con that it sees that I've logged in previously. It will eventually, yes, take me to the welcome screen. But if I one more time manually log in, and I'm on the home screen, remember, we have a logout. In the info icon, there's our logout. We don't have it obvious because we don't want them to leave our app. It's too cool. So under logout, in the info screen, what happens if you log out there? We saw this previously, and then it logs you out, and it takes you back to, back to welcome. To completely further test this, I'm going to close it and run it again. You saw that I logged out console is not logged in. So the if-else uh, happened again at the beginning. It saw that that local storage was set to empty. Remember we did in the logout function set item is logged in quotes empty. So is logged in is empty. You're not logged in. So there's nothing to display. It's an empty is logged in variable. That happened right here. That logout function is pretty pretty small, but it does something very important. It sets it sets your is logged in to empty. If you recall at the beginning, then if is logged in is empty, then we're not logged in, obviously. If this is the first time ever you are running the, the app, it's either gonna be null or undefined. That's why we've also checked for those possibilities. And those three possibilities should be able to cover the, the possibilities of is the person logged in or not. It's a little anticlimactic that it doesn't completely, completely work, but again, if anyone wants a demonstration on my personal device, you know, I'll show you right here. That app is on my device right here, and when I load the app, uh, right here, it does go automatically. First, we're going to have a little welcome screen uh, like that, and then it goes directly to welcome. So it will work once we get it to the device. That's going to be part two when we talk about what's the software that we need to convert it. It's a web page right now. It's a website. We're going to convert it in part two of the class to an app that will work on an iPhone, Android, Windows phone, whatever with an app icon to be sellable on the app stores or to be given away at the app stores. That's the big, that's the crux of part two, taking a humble web project and then converting it to the platforms. Before we get to that, part two, we have, uh, we have a little bit more that we need to do here and then a homework. We're going to have one homework assignment in part one in addition to logging into Blackboard and such. So the requirements of the class, as I said on day one, is you need to have X number of hours. Basically, don't miss more than two days. Uh, don't miss more than 8.4 hours, which is 10% of our class. So don't miss more than two days. And also, uh, you know, log into Blackboard and do what you have to there, and at least one homework assignment. So we're going to do a little more lecture. It will be a homework assignment. And then uh, we'll wrap up, and then next week, part two, we're going to register again quickly. Then we're going to just get back into the coding and continue with part two, and then part three. What I want to do at this point is uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, this. This looks boring. This black and white and gray and light gray and dark gray, boring. I want to start to uh, customize it with colors. Uh, we'll talk about graphics and adding graphics and other things later, but we'll, I, I, at least I want to start to customize it color-wise and customize it font-wise. This is also very boring fonts. So we'll, we'll take a little look at how to set this up for uh, customization. Colors, to set our colors, we actually have a cool feature that we can use. If you go online, go to, go to the web browser jQueryMobile.com. Let's go back to good old jQueryMobile.com, the documentation for jQuery Mobile. Scrolling down on the home page, 
theming built and branded. There's a way here for you to customize the theme, this basic gray theme. We can customize it. If you scroll down and click on Theme Roller, which is also at the top here, Themes, go to jQueryMobile.com and click Theme Roller. Yes? It does. This is going to take the place of uh, like hardcore CSS coding in a very cool drag and drop interface. It'll give us all of the code, which we can further edit. But here in a drag and drop way, I'm going to drag a color red here, put a color yellow there, and then we'll integrate that with our own code. So click on the theme and it says, okay, this is your theme roller. Great, get rolling. You get a little preview of what a possible app can look like, and then you can just drag colors from the top to the various elements. This will give us code that we will then add to our project, CSS code. But this is an ability for us to customize our app to whatever colors we want, whatever weird colors we want. Um, we have the various elements also on the left side. Sometimes you can select more options. Sometimes you can drag colors. Our project, jQuery Mobile, can have up to 26 different color designs. The default is that the project has, remember, data theme A and data theme B from like day one? Well, here it is. Theme A is going to be this color. Theme B is going to be these colors. All the way up to theme Z. We can have 26 different colors. We just set uh, header, data theme equals J, and you get a, you get green colors. You have to create a J swatch. The default here is three of them. If I want a fourth color, I click add swatch, and I have D, data theme equals D. I'm going to reset. I'm going to reload the screen to start over. to show you a little bit more about what we can do here. We've got these sets of colors. It's not a whole lot of colors, but you have lightness and saturation sliders. We have lightness and saturation sliders. So if you move those around, you will get other color combinations. Bright going to lighter to the right makes the colors more pastel, and to the left, darker, and then saturation strengthens or weakens the color. So okay, now I've got a whole other set of colors I can work with. So when I teach these this class, we have like 90% of the focus is in coding. And a lot of us have that mentality. We can do it or we like to do it or we can learn it. But the other 10% of the class is some design, is some graphics, is some color uh, schemes and fonts and, you know, design. And a lot of us don't quite have that. We're not that artsy. We would rather be coding than being artsy. If you're able to do both, great. You will need to do both. Because if you're making your own app from scratch, either to give away or sell, you should be as adept as possible in all aspects of the app creation process. Not just the coding, but some of this graphic design, some of this color design. Maybe I don't have that education, and I end up with you know an app that's that looks really weird because I've got all of these colors that clash. You know, I don't know. Does red and green work together? Does this brown work here? I don't know. I, I never learned it. That's that's okay. You're not going to be graded on your color schemes. You're going to be graded on being able to do this, and one more thing that I'll talk about. Um, let's explore this a little bit more. So don't worry if you make a really weird-looking color scheme. I'm not grading you on that. I just want to make sure you know how to make a new color scheme. <coughs> I've dropped some colors in there. You can go in and you know, further drop colors in many of these elements. This is not a good color scheme here. Dark color on top of a dark color. 
we want to think at the most basic concept of graphic design is contrast. Contrast on the page. For example, if I visit the college's website, everything has a background and a foreground. Background is behind every element. Foreground is the element on top. Here is a blue and here is a beige. This is nice and contrasty. It's pretty readable. Here we have white on black. Readable. White on gray. Readable. A light color on top of a dark color. Or vice versa. A dark color on top of a light color. You know, if we look at this screen, Classic contrast. Black color on white color. Dark color on light color. Contrast. Uh, that's why books are often printed, you know, white paper, black text. Very, very readable. This is starting to get a little harder to read. We're starting <laughs> to get this color of blue on top of this color of blue. We're starting to be a little harder to read. Not enough contrast. Even this up here with purchasing that shade of brown upon that white, you know, it's getting a little complex. If you look at the top here, also the size of things. So what I'm getting at, I chose these great colors, except here. I get a dark color on a dark background, a dark foreground on a dark background. Changing it like this, suddenly more readable and better. Say I have this color plus this color. Blue with blue. But it's a light blue on a dark blue. Looks good. Here we got this blue and this red. Obviously different colors, but they're now they're starting to clash. Notice, be careful, if you reset or refresh the browser, you will lose what you're doing. Although you do have undo. Actually, I didn't want green. You have undo right there at the top. Undo, redo. We have a share button if you click on share. This is going to give you a link to come back to this color scheme in the future. Unfortunately, they will only store your color combination for 30 days. So whatever color combination I made, I will have a unique address. Share the link. You can save that link if you want, but it will only be valid for 30 days. The way we use it, we'll go through the walkthrough of using it. Part of the homework will be that you will choose three color schemes for your app, which I will grade you on. Not the, not the quality of the color schemes, but that you can make three color schemes. Uh, making these color schemes, whatever you like, but let's go further. Well, how do I, uh, how do I apply this? How do I set this to my project? The way you add it to the project, in general, you've got a download button. This is going to let you download the code. It's going to give you a CSS file, basically, that we need to link to your project. So whatever color combination you make here, uh, just create some kind of simple color combination for A, at least. Then we'll see how do we add this to our project. And then I'll give you further instructions of what the homework will be but at least create a color combination. So I've got some color combination. What you then need to do is click download. It asks for a theme name. This will be the name of the file of .css that it will give you. This is basically telling you, download the zip file, extract it into your project, and link to the CSS file that we're creating here. Let's call this colors. It can be anything you want. 
This is going to be the color of the project. This screen says, this will generate a zip file that contains both a compressed and uncompressed <coughs> version of the theme. So just like we've got currently in our project, currently in our project in our CSS folder, jQueryMobile.min.css. We have the CSS, the, the jQuery Mobile CSS file with all of the default definitions of jQuery Mobile, and it's minified. .min is compressed; it's more efficient for our app. What jQuery Mobile is saying: you're about to get a zip file that has a compressed and uncompressed version. We're going to use the compressed version in a moment to add to our project. Click download. Before we go further, we've got import. You can import, but it's kind of a dumb import. You have to copy and paste the CSS code you previously downloaded to import it. But it's got to be the uncompressed version. So the zip file that you're about to download gives you the compressed and uncompressed version. We're going to use the compressed version in our project. But if you want to bring it back to jQuery Mobile Editor here, Theme Roller, to make more changes, you have to upload the uncompressed version. So I've got some basic colors. I click download. It downloaded there. I want to open that file, or that uh, zip file. Inside of the zip file, we have an index file and we have themes. Open themes. And then inside of themes, we have colors.css. That's what you typed when you click download. If I call that something else, that's what will be the name of your file here. Colors.css, colors.min.css, jQuery mobile icons, and images. The only one you need is colors.min.css. That's what we will link in our project. It's the compressed version. So you need to copy or move your .min.css file into your CSS folder of your CBDB project. In the CBDB project, we have the index scripts images CSS. So in your CSS folder, copy the colors.min.css file. You should have the original jQuery mobile with the images, the icons for jQuery mobile, the brand new colors that I created in the CSS folder. I'm going to save that zip file as well. Mine went to the desktop. I'm going to copy the whole zip file, not into the project, but just onto my flash drive. If I want to ever get back to edit that color scheme, I need the original uncompressed CSS code. So copy that zip file to keep it for future reference for yourself. In the index file, in the head, we need to link to another CSS file. This one with our custom colors. So back in Notepad, index.html at the top, line 7, we have the reference to jQuery Mobile. We want to load the basic jQuery Mobile CSS, the gray. Then we want to load our custom CSS. So next line, we're going to create a link, line 8. REL style sheet, we're about to link to a style sheet. href, we're about to link to our file. Our file is in the CSS folder, isn't it? So is my href correct? No, because we need to say CSS folder slash CSS file. 
if you copied your colors.min.css into the CSS folder, the href path should be CSS folder slash the colors of your project. So again, the order matters. JavaScript is read from top to bottom. CSS <laughs> is read from top to bottom. HTML is read from top to bottom. If I had added my custom colors first, all my cool blue colors would load first. But then the default colors would load and override, override and overwrite my cool colors. So the order should be that let's load the basic bland gray colors <coughs> of jQuery Mobile, and then let's load our custom colors. Running it should give you your custom colors. I don't have boring colors anymore. So uh, let's make a note here. Using jQuery mobile theme roller. Create a theme. Download the zip. Move your custom CSS file into your project. Link to it via HTML. So I showed you how to do it. Conceptually, it's not complex. This is going to be the homework, plus one more thing. not three times. Remember, in one CSS file, you can define three or 26 colors. But you will need to do an A, B, and C. One file, A, B, and C. I'll uh, write down those uh, requirements in a moment, because we have one more thing to do. But part of the homework, <coughs> uh, which will be due by... When should it be due? Friday. You can turn it in online. You can turn it in today before you leave if you've got enough time. Friday or next? No, this Friday. Friday. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Sure. How about Sunday? Friday, Sunday? <laughs> Sunday. Sunday. You think it's that complex? Okay, so Sunday. We'll do Sunday. Let's uh, let me write it down here. I'll put this in the in. I'll put this in the folder in a moment. Uh, homework for part one. Create your own uh, custom colors in jQuery Mobile Theme Roller. Must have a, must have swatch a. B and C. Link the CSS file to your HTML file. I have one thing to do and a second thing that I'll talk about in one moment. Do Sunday. 11.59 p.m. So the last minute of Sunday. Honestly, you're going to be able to do this today. Don't be scared. But, okay, Sunday. 
to know whether which one to pick? It knows which one we picked because the default is data role, data theme A. We have here for this section, we didn't say anything, so the default is data theme equals A. When we create a theme B, C, D, J, we say data theme X, and that color scheme loads up into this section. So for example here, data theme B, if I had a different B designed, designated, it would um, load B. Let me, let me do this. I'll take it back before I added a, my custom colors right here. The default of of jQuery Mobile was data theme B, a dark theme, uh, but if you create your own themes, you set data theme. I'll write it up here, switch between themes with data role equals x, whatever, whatever other letter. So that section is going to have the theme B, that other section is going to have a theme D, another section will have another color, if you want. But again, be careful about having so many different color schemes because then your app is going to look weird. Uh, it should be a consistent color scheme. Think about the apps you use on a regular basis. Every, every screen of Facebook does not look different. It's the same blue, it's the same white. Every screen of Twitter doesn't look different. It's the same white and the same blue. Every screen of Instagram, it's the same colors over and over. So, you know, don't go crazy by adding data themes to every element. You could, but then it looks like a mishmash, not professional. So, continuing to write this homework. One. Uh, okay, so that's going to be part one. You're going to need to create your own custom style sheet in the theme roller. A, B, and C, different designs. Link that CSS file, li link the min.css file to your HTML file. We'll do part two in a moment. That'll be due by Sunday. Uh, what you're going to do is um, I think uh, I need to check either Blackboard. I believe Blackboard has a way for you to upload your work, so I'll, I'll put it in Blackboard. Or uh, we're going to have a little bit longer lab time today than usual because we need to talk about one more thing, which is the second part of the homework, and we'll have lab time. If you get it done today, show me today you're done. If you need until Sunday, great, work until Sunday. Now let's talk about the second part of the homework. Add a custom font using fontsquirrel.com. We have these basic fonts at the moment, Arial. I want cool, weird fonts. Fontsquirrel.com is a website that has a variety of fonts for us to use in our project. Now, you might have heard of Google Fonts. Maybe you've used Google Fonts in Feud or other classes. The problem with Google Fonts is that they are that they are dependent on existing on a server. Our project then needs to connect to the internet to download those fonts every time our project loads up. If when we eventually get this project to a mobile device, if the if the person doesn't have an internet connection at that moment, that cool font that we chose on Google Fonts will not load up because we need an internet connection. So at a place like fontscroll.com, it will give you a bundle of fonts and code that we add to our project so that our app can be offline and we get a cool interesting font. Let's see how font scroll works. You can open the web browser and go to fontscroll.com. There's a bunch of fonts in different styles. Let's say milkshake would work really good on my 
project or Alex Brush, Mechanica, etc. So we have all these different fonts to choose from. When you're trying to pick the perfect font, you have to think of different things. Again, here's a little bit of graphic design. All of these fonts look great, but then the problem will be once you start using them the wrong way, meaning you have fonts that will look great as H1, but not so good as a P tag. A P or paragraph is a lot of text in a small space. And an interesting font like this, Intro Rust, might not look so good in a paragraph, but it looks great in H1 or H2. So before you pick a font, I would click on the name of the font, where you can then preview it, take it for a test drive. CDDB. This particular font does not have lower cases. I want a lower case. This doesn't have a lower case. Now that's not going to completely dissuade me from using this font. But there are specimens. Here's how it looks when the text is small. That is not so nice to read. That small. It's great that big, but not that small. Let's say I'm browsing around. Okay, milkshake. I love how that looks, but once you actually view it and you start to look at regular text, that's horrible. <laughs> Don't don't ask me to read that. People are going to give me one star on my app. They can't even read it. So it's often going to be better to use a nice, cool, ornate font for heading 1, 2, 3, etc. And then use a little bit more of a boring, readable font for text that people need to read. Here's Source Sans Pro. That's readable. It's boring, but it's readable. This doesn't have 10,000 fonts to work with, like Google Fonts. This, this doesn't have every kind of font, but one of the important things is it says 100% free for commercial use. There are many websites out there with fonts. I remember 1001freefonts.com 1001 was a really cool site. Don't even go to the site. I shouldn't tell you about it. Because we cannot assume that these fonts are legal for us to use. Fonts are intellectual property. Even though I've got 200 built into my computer, I might not have the license to be able to use that font in my app, especially for commercial purposes. When I teach my various web design classes, people always ask me about using images. My answer for images is do not use any images you did not create. Don't do a Google search for a picture of the Eiffel Tower and use it in your, in your app. Don't go find a picture of a birthday cake for your bakery app. Use only photos that you created yourself to stay out of legal trouble. Because I may be able to find you know, millions of photos of cakes on Google. Great, I'm going to use this photo for my app. Perfect. Someone created it. It looks like this is officially from DairyQueen.com. Someone was paid to create that photo. That photo was sold to someone like Dairy Queen. Dairy Queen or the original photographer owns that photo. And a photo has a value monetarily, just like this piece of hardware is worth some amount of money, a couple hundred dollars now because it's old. But when it was brand new, this was a $600 phone. And we believe it. We believe that this thing is worth that much. Even though if I get it at a great discount from my provider, uh, this is still worth hundreds of dollars. We believe it because it's real. Pictures are worth hundreds of dollars. Fonts are worth hundreds of dollars. To avoid the legality of all of that, don't simply go off and search and find pictures and borrow them. You may have heard, well, this is going to be, uh, you know, uh, fair use. All of this legal stuff is dealt best with the legal profession, lawyers and judges and such. So why not avoid legality by doing it the right way? Fonts. This is a website dealing with fonts that are free for you to use for your apps, for your commercial apps. Question. Uh, off the top of my head, no. This is the one I usually go to. I think it's one of the best places. It doesn't have 10,000 fonts, 
but you know I'm gonna find one that I think works really well and I'm gonna be safe if other people have recommendations that that'd be good to let me know but I would recommend here you know these other sites with so many fonts I don't trust it Look, that's an amazing font but I don't know what the it says here free for personal use I'm gonna make an app that I'm gonna sell at the App Store for 99 cents that is not personal use that is commercial use so I would be in trouble they may never find out great but if someone finds out worst that can happen is they send you a letter that says please remove your font our font from your app worst case scenario they say please remove your our font from your app and here's a bill for five hundred dollars worst your case scenario remove your app we'll see you in court so it happens if you see that they're good if not this one says free but still that doesn't mention commercial use or not so so if it's there great but again I would really lead you directly to one site that I'm sure should be safe for us and yeah we can do a Google search and search for stock images and stock fonts and all of that but I'm leading you to a place that's safest I've seen fonts on sale limited time offer for two thousand dollars one font that costs more than my computer three of my computers so go to a place where it's safe use appropriate material people sometimes say well I heard if you find a photo and you change it 10 percent you're safe 10 percent is in the eye of the beholder what is changing 10 percent of this photo in your opinion the color of the balloons maybe removing a slice if you have Photoshop skills you're putting so much effort to make this change take your own photo please and then you're gonna be safe you cannot really create your own fonts easily so go to a site that is about a hundred percent free commercial use fonts so the way the site works is you browse for a cool font some fonts some fonts have oh uh, before that uh, you can also browse on the edge over here retro fonts hand drawn fonts you can also search but if I'm looking around at retro fonts different fonts here I'm looking at a font some fonts are gonna have are gonna be even easier for you to use because once you click on the font it'll say web font kit this is already bundled and ready for you to download and use in your app the fonts also tell you up here this can be used on desktop web mobile devices ebooks try to find fonts that are that have a web kit link and have the most liberal usage here you can use it on everything basically other fonts let's say I was looking at Alex brush well that one has a font kit uh, next okay Nexa Nexa doesn't have a button that says font kit you have to go elsewhere you have to go to font spring and once you go off to some other site you have to then do what they tell you to do on how to download it. But let's see here, uh, Acros, download Mechanica. So, uh, just as an example here, for all of us to look at the same thing, go ahead and go to Retro, on the right side, Retro, we'll use Airstream just so that we all do the same thing and understand how it works so this is going to be the other part of the homework to choose at least one cool font for your project let's learn how to do this go to Airstream there this has a web font kit this one is already bundled for you to use this in your project so you click web font kit
download at font-based kit. This is going to be a little line of CSS plus this file that it's going to give us. This is then we will be able to have any font we want here embedded in our app without the usage or requirement of an online link. <clears throat> Click download at font face kit. It's going to download the file and when you open that zip file there's going to be how to use the web font kit and then a folder <coughs> called web fonts. The name of the font folder inside of that a style sheet and the actual font, either in .wf format or .otf format or .ttf format, and I'll write these steps in a moment. But these two files, I need to put them into my project. And then I need to link to that CSS file. That CSS file is activating the usage of that font in my project. However you want to do this, but perhaps in the project folder, maybe we'll make a folder here called font. Yeah, in the project, in the CBDB folder. So in your project folder, you make a you make a folder called font. Depending on what you've downloaded, it should give you a style CSS file and some font. Copy those two into font folder. Every other file that is there, you don't really need it. It shows you a demo of what the font looks like. There's a README file, right? There were instructions, how to use the font, and then a license. So that stuff you don't need. You only need that style sheet, and you need the actual font file, oftentimes a .wof file. In my index file, I need to link to that, to that font file. So in my uh, HTML file, I've linked the basic jQuery mobile. I've then linked my cool colors. After that, I will then add a link to that custom font. Link rel style sheet. href font folder slash style sheet dot CSS. Now here, don't uh, blindly copy this. It, it, it might sometimes it's different depending on the on the font. You need to see what your zip file called it, but it should usually be called style sheet CSS. I put it into a font folder. I'm linking to it style sheet CSS, not style sheets style sheet. So now this HTML file can link to that CSS file. When our HTML file links to that CSS file, it activates the ability for us to use the font, one or more fonts from Font Squirrel. The way we use it then is we say h1, use this font, h3, use this font, p tag, use this font. If you look inside of that CSS file, if you open it in Notepad, Look at this code that I wrote for us. A CSS line, at font space. We're activating the font family Airstream Regular. That's the name internally of this font. You're going to choose a font besides this font. If this works for you, great. 
but when for the homework you're going to choose a different font beside Airstream. But this is activating the Airstream font. It's activating it by having a source to various versions of the font, such as the WOF version. The way you use it is after this code, line 13, you can say H1, font-family, colon, the name of the font on line 2, air stream regular. Depending on your font, that is going to, might have capital letters, it might have spaces, it might have dashes, it really depends on your font. But you'll know the name of your font because it'll tell you on line 2. So on to the H1 tag, I'm going to use that font in my project. I got a pretty ornate font, so it's going to work best for headings. You can say h1, comma, h2, comma, h3, and that'll be added to all headings. Notice there's commas in between those. You can get fancy and link to more than one font file and then have h2 with a completely different font. You will only need to do one unique font. Let's say I downloaded another different font. This one is called, you know, crazy, crazy font. So that other font that I downloaded, I then use it on some other element. This particular font didn't look so good at that size. There is. It's not that plain Arial anymore. H1 has been set to this new font. I can change the size of the of the font with uh, with font size. I'm going to break this into multiple lines for readability. Font size. Depending on the font, various factors, it might look as good as advertised or not. I just chose a font. It doesn't look that good. I'll probably go back and choose a better font. But the ability to activate a different font besides this plain one, that'll be part of the homework. So now at the top, wherever there's that H1, it'll have a new font. If I want a different font here, most likely there was an H2 that we wrote. new font. I'll write down these notes in the project and then um, further explain the homework. Using font squirrel. Find a web kit. Let's see what did they call it? Find a web font kit ready font. Download the zip. Extract the style sheet.css and 
.wf or .ttf or .otf files into your project. Font folder, link, HTML file to that CSS file. Use the font with font family CSS code. And see the example that I'll put in the folder. I remember I'm recording this, so if you do need until Sunday to, to do this, you can replay the video. But the idea is you, you go to the site, you download the file, you put the file in the project, and you link to the CSS file. Based on the example style sheet file there, you see what the name of your font is, line 2. It's up to you to find any, any font that you like besides Airstream, the one I just did. You can do more than one font if you want. You won't get any extra credit for that, but you can practice that. The homework, continuing. Return custom color, must have ABC, link the min, CSS, Ethereum. Okay, add a custom font. Pick one font besides Airstream. That's the one we did in class to add to your project. Create a font folder in your project and store the font in it. Turn in by Sunday. So throughout this whole uh, semester so far, it's very, it's been very much you know uh, show and tell or follow along sort of thing. Looking at people's uh, work and efforts so far, it seems people are getting it overall. This is kind of like a little step outside the box because I'll go this far with it. I think you'll able you'll be able to get it with a little bit of time based on what we did today. So that's going to be the homework. Um, there's going to be that homework for part one, some other kind of homework for part two, and then part three. Uh, the big idea is uh, seeing if you're able to do this. Instead of just rote following me along to see if you are able to do it on your own. General questions on the requirements of this homework? How do we turn them in? Two possible ways. Uh, in person, because we're going to end the lecture in a moment. In person, if you get it done by 9.30, just show me. I'll come up to you and I'll mark your points. If you need until Sunday, uh, you'll, there'll be a module on Blackboard for you to upload it to. Uh, 